ಮಾತರ oil has now been agreed to be purchased by the EU from Russia at $60 a barrel in other words the price cap agreement has been reached will that mean that the western europe can breathe a little bit easy perhaps but there is more good news in my opinion coming along the way especially for india why do i say that let's take a quick look at what is playing out so we talked about oil being uh, capped at 60 dollars per barrel for eu right very good so now there will be uh, you know singing and dancing in poland maybe they'll be singing rem jim gire bhavan sulag sulag jaye badan heater ki garmi mein lagi kaisi agan you get it okay <laughs> now you have to give me a little bit of leeway uh, what is bhavan bhav price okay so they have that, they have reached a price now there will be heating gas and uh, a little bit of lowering of prices all around western europe that's what i was trying to say all right what does this mean for india well i want to tell you a little bit of story about a small investment that india has made in a russian island called sakhalin now this was mentioned briefly in dgi a couple of episodes ago you can go back and look at that but here are the details this has been going on for several years now they have information that perhaps perhaps india can start drawing down upon the output from this why because let's take a look at it this is the sakhalin island and this is about the kiril island remember this came in conjunction with a possible invasion by russia on japan to annex back kiril islands now this is sakhalin island which is a little bit above the kiril islands and i think i told you about this that kiril islands is claimed by japan and also russia right now japan has the control over it japan used to control sakhalin but russia has rested it uh, around the second world war time anyway so sakhalin is a russian territory today the island has its own government and they have an agreement with russia to have their oil fields explored some of the deepest oil wells have been drilled here 10 15 kilometers deep and there has been some oil a billions of dollars have been spent 2.8 billion still date and there is some interesting saga going on here and i'll explain to you what that is when this project was conceived sometime in the 1990s or early 2000s rosneft companies had about 20% exxon mobil had 30% sakhalin oil and gas development corporation this is a japanese company that had 30% and ongc videsh had 20% okay so about 2.8 billion has been spent assuming that that cost was proportionally borne by everybody india has probably spent about 560 million dollars in the excavation now in march 2022 because of the sanctions imposed by the united states on russia exxon mobil withdrew from the project and there has been a certain amount of drop in production because of the fact that exxon and shell have withdrawn from there and what was the production at that time well we don't know the exact numbers but in 2007 250000 barrels of oil and natural gas was 140 million cubic feet per day so you take 20% of that right one fifth of that so 28 million cubic feet per day can be claimed for india likewise 250000 barrels of oil 50000 barrels of oil can be claimed for india because india has a partnership in this now if you look back at the slide that i showed you of the sakhalin island the the oil gets pulled from here and then it travels via this pipeline 
to Decastri Marine Terminal from where it can be loaded into tankers and the crude can be sent. So it's very close for Japan but um, India it has to go some distance but at least India has what I can say as claim to its own large source of oil. However, there are some challenges here especially environment related. The western grey whale population has been endangered. There are only 130 western grey whales and out of which only 30 or 25 are females. So there is a real concern that these could get wiped out because of the drilling because evidently the drilling process uh, takes out some of the oxygen in the ocean around that area. So this part is a bone of contention. However, <laughs> Exxon was fine doing all that stuff till March until the sanction kicked in and then once the sanctions kicked in they said okay bye bye we're not going to be here anymore. Exxon has a lot of options. I don't think India has that many so this is one of the challenges that India has. India cannot cut the umbilical cord to Russia so easily because India desperately needs this kind of oil. Something that it can rely upon, something that it has invested in. So this is something that many of you may not know which is why I thought I should share all this data. But why is all this good news for India? Well, the good news is that West, the United States is continuing to do business, especially on the crude front with Russia. And hopefully this too shall continue. And hopefully that 30% that Exxon Mobil has left on the table, we don't know how that is going to get divvied. Maybe it will it'll get divvied up 10-10% among the three remaining partners, in which case India's stake will go from 20% to 30%. Only the Petroleum Ministry and the PMO's office can explain this, but it augurs well for India. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. And also, if you think our research was good, please consider donating using the super thanks button. Namaskar.